The state chairman, Mr. John Ochala, in Calabar Cross River State, has slammed Governor Ben Ayade of the People's Democratic Party for returning to school to earn a master's degree in law. He said any serious-minded governor would not abandon governance for any academic pursuit. But Ayade, through his special advisor on media and publicity, Kristen Ita, responded, saying that the party in the state is notorious for lies. He went further to cite the example of Nasser El Rufai, who he claimed started a PhD program in philosophy in governance and policy analysis at United Nations University in Netherlands. We're talking about that now. I still have my guest with me, Babashola Adigbui, political analyst. Thank you for staying with us. It's and a of pleasure. course, uh, we have uh, Rashid Adigbui, political analyst as well. Pleasure to have you join us. Okay. <laughs> Slamming of the uh, governor for going back to school. Is there a law against a governor while on sit to go back to? Let me, let me take that question to you. There is no law, actually, that's against any political official that to go back to school. But it is expected, what is expected of anybody? is that if you are in a political position, it's expected of you to concentrate on what you are elected for. Nevertheless, if you still want to go to school, don't let it affect your statutory job as the governor of the state. So why do you think this is eliciting so much uh, a reaction from both the opposition and some concerned citizens? Well, the interest is ripe now because it's a new development within our policy. Uh, what we had in times past were former head of states or retired head of states going back to school. Yeah, the, the government of um, the, Cross River has talked about the, the actual, former Mugabe uh, that he no, got I'm, all his I'm talking about the even Nigerian and environment. Here in Nigeria, we, they cited El Rufai, but we cannot independently. Ambassador went back to school after he left the presidency. Gawan went back to school overseas after he left, when he was overthrown by, uh, by Inekou Dista. It's what Ayade is pursuing now raises a fundamental issue that political structure in Nigeria, particularly the political parties, needs to address. Is he must be aware that having come into government as governor, he, has, he must have identified certain uh, limitations within him himself, and he wanted to correct this error. Leadership. It's not just something you pick on the streets or in a coffee shop. Uh, it could be learned. So there's a process of leadership. A there are dimensions to leadership. If you don't prepare yourself well for office, it's like this broadcasting house. You cannot just buy the equipment and say you are launching a TV station. There's a process setting it up. Uh, there are processes involved. If you jump the queue in the process, you're likely to end up a failure. But, but this man hasn't jumped process. We know he's a trained lawyer already, and he's governing a state. Uh, one would think that a quest for more knowledge to better grow the state would be something that is welcomed as against it being a distraction. You should have done that before coming to government. That's, that's, that's the main issue I'm trying to address. For that's, crying out that's... loud, sir, the man is a professor. <laughs> I had the degree, the, the BSc master's professor. Now, when he was the Senate, he went to the Delta State University the to law. acquire the law and later went to Nigerian Bar School. The question is, what does he want to do with the master's in, with masters in law? Is this going to affect or improve development of the state? As far as I'm concerned, I've never had any good news in respect of uh, IRD as a governor of uh, uh, yes, Cross River State, comparing him with the past governors. Compared with the past governors, I learned the man is just there. Is, there is no improvement. And another question is, why law? Law. Most of these political officials that have discovered that they go to school while they were in the office, and the only cause they go, most of them go for is law. How many of them have actually worked with the law certificate? Otherwise, they are in the office or after leaving the office. So, for me. The, the, what, the, what, the, what they are doing is what the governor is just trying to do is to work, uh, capitalize on the loopholes in the constitution to, and to but use the public it, funds. Is it possible 
It, you, you, you both seem to agree that there is no law that stops him from going to school again, right? But is it possible for him to work and still deliver while studying? Would it be a distraction like it's been alluded? Of course, it's going to be a distraction. Definitely. And that's why I <laughs> pointed out that the political parties have a challenge in this. In selecting who leads, there are certain processes you go through and there are certain criteria you establish in order to shoot up your leadership candidates. Uh, leadership can be learned like medicine, it could be learned like law, it could be learned like engineering. Within the party structure, they should be able to determine that this candidate we are putting forward one, does he have the leadership? Why is he a leader? Does he have the vision to lead? Does he have the qualities of the type of leadership that will throw up cross river state? If that, that, that candidate doesn't possess these qualifications, even with 10 PhD awards all over the world, it ordinarily should not. But here in Nigeria, we make a mistake. If somebody is appointed today, imagine the director of a company, immediately he becomes a community leader. It might be imagine the director managing a plastic company, but immediately he becomes a leader, and the next thing he says he wants to go to Senate. And we all chorus and kill behind them. And turn. So we are ended up throwing up a lot of charlatans as leaders. And it's good. What Ari has done now is a pointer to that father. He has realized that he lacked the leadership qualities to lead in, poli in politics. That's but would that be a fair assessment, considering he's held that position for the first term and he's gone for a second term, and he's there? There's a point every man in, needs to get to in life where you would come to yourself and realize, nobody needs to tell you, and realize that you are not getting it right. Because you are just, it's like uh, you are jumping on the same position without moving forward. In, in all of this, yeah, we've not um, had like the reason. I saw headlines that said reason why I had went back to school. But when you read the story, there is actually no reason, aside from the aide saying it's a perfect decision for him to go back to school. But I think it's important we ask, why now? Do you think there is, what could be his reason to want to go back to school at this particular hour? I'm very sure if you interview Ben Hayade himself, he will tell you he wants to encourage other students to go to uh, the politicians. politicians to go to school or the citizen of Coast River to go to school. That's why he's going to school as a governor. I want to inspire them so that they believe that regardless of the position you find yourself, education is very important. I'm very sure that is what he's going to tell you. He can't come out to tell me that the masters that he's possessing and that he's got it for is going to improve the economy of the state, is going to do the road, is going to put food on the, uh, on the table for the people. Definitely not. So the pub, they, as far as I'm concerned, they don't have, he, he doesn't have any reason going to school. Yeah. Other than okay. to go to school and to prove to the people or to, uh, how many times will he even appear in the classroom? Okay, so you're basically <laughs> agreeing with the opposition right now because they're saying that Ayade is going back to school to, as a, to serve as a distraction from the fact that he is not performing in the state. Do you hold that same opinion and why? Yes, I do. I told you the assessment I have concerning Ayade as a governor of Cross River State is, is, is pathetic. Do you have details of what is happening in that state? Enough for you to come to that conclusion. Well, what because sometimes we stay on the other side and we're not in there. People in there might be saying a different thing. Well, well, whatever information I have is based on the information I received from people living in Cross River. Okay. Uh, the last time I went to Cross River, it was not the governor then. Um, uh, the last governor was the one there. So I learned that, okay, I was there about two years ago. I remember I was there about two years ago. I did not see any improvement, actually. I did not see any improvement. So the question now is, why going to school instead of concentrating on how to improve on the economy of the state? The masters, in, if I said, oh, I've gone to mass, I've gone to school to study masters in there, to have MSc in economics or developing economics, I would have said, okay, it's related to the state. Maybe he wants to understand how he can improve on the economy. But going to school for masters in law, is it to defend the state or what? No, definitely is just is is in school because he has seen an opportunity for himself 
to acquire a degree using the public funds. That's the way I say it. Are we sure he's using public funds for this? That's another question. Yeah. But <laughs> what, let me, let at, me, this, at this okay. stage, what IAD needs to score a good record of performance in Cross River State are two basic things. One, knowledge. Two, uncompromising commitment to others in terms of service. If you it takes those two qualities into governance, remains uncompromising in terms of commitment to service, he will not be bothered about who is getting the service. It's generally to the people, whether you are APC or PDP. He needs to get that right. Guest professor from Harvard, from everywhere, if he fails in that position of being people-centered, it's a failure. Uh, I'm okay. First, the second one is knowledge. No matter where, it's like people go to school, a lot of people go to school and walk through the university. Some go to school and university walks through them. When you pick the two candidates, you see a major difference. You know the one that went to school and the one that just walked through the school. So and that's why at the end of the day, you have graduates employed in companies, in government. Some have what you call stream mentality, while others come out with ocean stage mentality. A wider view perspective of life of the world. And they can bring that dimension to governance to lift other people. This is part of what Nigeria is lacking at the very top. We have people with very micro reasoning, managing key institutions in the country, and as such, we remain at the base of the pyramid. These are the two things Ayade needs to inject into the system if they don't exist in his life. A degree in law will not bring you that. A degree in geography will not bring you that. It's a conscious personal development to have a global view of what the environment is and take cross river state away for the pedestal and take it to the Beijing of this world or the Tokyo of this world and then be people centered in terms of service. He does this too. The day he leaves office, cross rivers people will push, if possible, for a minute of constitution for him to have a third term. But as he has shared his opinion about IRD's uh, service delivery in Cross River State. What is your assessment of his work and how do you think that he cannot, like, his, has his performance given you an indication that this will make him slow down? Uh, honestly speaking, I've not done a mapping of Cross River, uh, not the tracking of IRD's leadership. Uh, but last, last election, noise that came out in Cross River and uh, Cross River and Aquaibom show clearly that in the South-South, Cross River cannot really stand up to say, yes, we are great. Beyond what I read in the media, I don't have a private mapping of performance of fire day in Cross River State. Okay. Do you see any other governor taking this advice, this movement to the next level? Because it seems that all you hear from the aid of the governor is how perfect the decision is, how progressive the thought is of the governor going back to school and that it's not going to affect governance. Do you see other governors copying this move? Let well, me ask uh, okay. Babashola. Yes, I do. <laughs> I do. Don't be surprised tomorrow another governor will wake up and say, oh, I think there is a need for me to go to school. I want to go and study something that will improve the state uh, development or whatever. Don't be surprised. Because one thing I've noticed about us in this country, in this country, most especially among our leaders, if someone can do something without being cautioned or without being uh, disciplined or punished, they also want to copy the same thing and to, to, to replicate the same thing so that when nobody will hustle, stand against them. They can also say, yes, I did this, I did that. And um, that's number one. Number two, another thing I've noticed, if, if you are a, a degree conscious person, 
it's an opportunity for you to, you know, we love this title. Nigerians, an average Nigerian loves title, loves to put uh, the, the, the grief in front of his name to show that while I was still busy as a governor, I still have, I was able to just to prove to you that I'm brilliant. You know, I would not be surprised if by tomorrow we say about five or six period governors also applying for uh, BSC or MSC in, uh, in one university within Nigeria or outside Nigeria. Your final thoughts before we wrap things up? Well, it's the governors are referred to as executive governors of, this, of their states. And uh, in the ordinary interpretation, I will see it as a full time responsibility that does, that does not give allowance for you to play around with other side hurdles, side, uh, side interests. If you have a chamber, you let the governor, the parties in times past, and now you shut down your chamber. Or somebody takes over the chamber if you are in top. Running a company, you even move away from the board of that company. So as executive governor, I don't, even there's no law in the constitution saying you cannot go to school or practice, do any practice. As executive governor, it's seen as a full-time responsibility that should not. But in the political environment here, because we don't give caution, like you said, it's a virus that has been injected into the system, and before you know it, it will catch, like virus normally catches up with people. Other governors may start talking that they want to go back to school. It's like our ministers. In the First Republic, we started off ministers. You have to pick a minister from the parliament. And that's why they are referred to as honorable ministers. But the constitution we have now, pressure constitution, does not give provision for that. Anybody could become a minister without being, having been elected to the parliament. But the media still refer to them as honorable minister, and their peers or those who write paper, uh, presentations for them refer to them as honorable minister for justice. They are not honorable. It's not even in the constitution. It's, it's not there. They are not honorable ministers. But the media continue with the language of the First Republic, and they carry about as honorable members. Thank you very much, gentlemen, as always, for coming on the program. It's a pleasure. Thank you for this. Yeah. We'll go on a short break for a plus package. When we return, I will give you my take. Don't go away. Parents of about six kidnapped schoolgirls from the Engravers College in Kaduna State had lamented the refusal of the kidnappers to release their children even after the collection of ransom. The parents stated that the kidnappers claimed the Kaduna state government has publicly assured Nigerians it is on top of the matter, thus aggravating their anger and willingness to deal with the government directly. According to them, ransom funds earlier paid were raised by their own efforts and they are now appealing to the kidnappers to show mercy and release their words. We were making effort with the kidnappers of our children to release them. And suddenly the kidnappers became wild and said government has come into, in, into the case. The government should settle them because the government pronouncement in Abuja said that government is on top of the situation. Went to the extent of playing the video about the comments that the governor made to us. The fact is that the school is a private school. It's not a government school, and government is not negotiating. So that is what we want to clarify, that no government is involved in this very thing. It's only we, the parents here, as you see us, that has been struggling to see how these students will be released. We have been suffering. We have been under torment now. For the past 11 days, we have been on our own. Please let the public know that there is no government involvement. Everybody should disregard any other information apart from this information. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, does face a major test with the Kogi and Bios elections come November 16. It is indeed an opportunity for the Commission to perfect its systems and processes to convince Nigerians that lessons were learned from her past mistakes. Issues around voter register and voting points, as well as the issues of settlements, logistics challenges of late deployment of election materials and personnel, and the weaknesses observed in the collation and transmission of results must be fixed ahead of that date. 
To the contestants, I would say, it will make a lot of sense if they engage in issue-based campaigns as they traverse the state to mark and market their candidates and their parties. They should not forget the rules guiding the process and their enthusiasm to win voters. And to the citizens of Bielsa State, it is pertinent that they educate themselves on the portfolios of the candidates to make informed choices. Thank you for your time tonight on the program. We would love to have you join us again tomorrow, same time. Until then, be safe and bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.